So with this in mind, I'd like to share with you a idea, an idea, which is the best religion. <laughs> Anybody? Which is, okay, let's go a little bit closer to us. Which is the best diet for us? The healthy one. Yeah. So, define healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Keto diet? Atkins diet? Vegan? KFC? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, this is just, you know, I'm just wanting to throw the idea out there already. Okay, so because we are talking about, is that the best food for the dog? Is there such a thing, so to speak? Okay, and with this in mind as well, I'd like, you, I'd like to read this particular uh, book. So it's quite interesting. This, this, this is marketing, being a vet and also owning a business. It's not hard to read, but this guy called Seth Gordon. But I read it, I'm like, oh my god, I have to read to all my team. Okay, the marketing of dog food. Dog food must be getting better, more nutritious. And of course, delicious. Americans spent more than $24 billion on dog food last year. The average price has skyrocketed, so has the gourmet nature of ingredients like sweet potatoes, elk, and free-range bison. And yet, I've never seen a dog buy dog food. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> dog food might be getting more delicious as it gets more expensive, but I actually have no idea. We have no clue whether dogs enjoy it more, because we're not dogs. But we can be sure that dog owners like it more. <laughs> because dog food is for dog owners, it is for the way it makes them feel, the satisfaction of taking care of an animal that responds with loyalty and affection, the status of buying a luxury good and the generosity of sharing it. Some dog owners want to spend more on dog food they buy, more on the dog food they buy. Some want gluten-free dog food loaded with high-value placebos. But let's not get confused about who is this innovation for, it's not for the dogs, it's for us. A marketer or a dog food company might decide that the secret of more dog food sales is to make the food that tastes better. But that requires understanding how a dog thinks, which is awfully difficult. It turns out that the right formula to make a dog food is the dog food the dog owners want to buy. The purpose of this example isn't to help you market dog food better, it's to understand that there's always, almost always a disconnect between performance and appeal that the engineer's choice of the best price, performance, combination is rarely the market's choice. There are two voices in our head. There is a dog's voice, the one that doesn't want to have too many words, but knows what it wants. And there's the owner's voice, which is nuanced, contradictory and complex. It is juggling countless inputs and is easily distracted on how we choose our dog food. Like the dog owner who is choosing based on 100 factors but not taste because when was the last time you tasted the dog food? <laughs> the people you seek to care, to serve to care about a range of inputs and emotions, not simply a competition, not simply a contest for who is the cheapest. So I read that I'm like, man, <laughs> this guy knows what he's talking about. The dog food, the, the packaging, the green, huge, organic, raw, Food that your dog loves best. Do they even know your dog? <laughs> I get very terrified when people say that food that my dog loves best. It's like, dude, you don't even know my dog, man. <laughs> so just to throw it out there, just to throw it out there, something to think about. And um, so, in summary, you know, there are many, many diets available, as I've just illustrated. Whether we agree with them or not, a separate issue. It is available, just like how their diets for us, just how their religions. Dry processed food is still the market leader, bars down. It's about 80% fundamentally. So pros and cons with each diet, I've just briefly illustrated them over there. Uh, research and understanding highly recommend for choice of diet. Suitability for yourself and for your dog. Largely depends on owner's preferences, in the end, really. Okay, because the reality is, without something random, and that's me throwing a spy in the works, this dog has been around for a very, very long time already. <laughs> They've been around for very long. Whether how they sort of live, how they look, it's you know that is all very subjective. I don't think anybody has been poisoning dogs. They have a very short life, so to speak, despite what they eat. And personally, 
I have seen dogs thrive on raw feet all the way, amazing teeth, 15, 16 years old, and the owner says, it's a raw food. I've also seen dogs that get diarrhea with raw food with bad teeth as well. And same for dry food, same for wet food, and same for owners who change their food every month. <laughs> and the dog iron cast stomach, they don't get diarrhea whatsoever <laughs> because it's just been conditioned from there. And you know, it's still running around, it's jumping around. So who's to argue where is what, so to speak? So you know, just to throw out there really, like what's the best religion? <laughs> Remember, marketing aims. Just my marketing aims towards pet owners, not pets. Your pets don't look at the package. <laughs> Your pets don't read the label. It's marketing for that. So just to be quite clear of why we choose dog food, how we choose dog food, it, um, just be aware that don't, don't just follow the gimmick because everybody says so. That's good marketing. It's not nothing about the dog food, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. All food must go to the lab for testing. <laughs> Any questions?